Good Friday afternoon to everybody. Thanks for clicking on to today's European Outlook. It is the final European Outlook of the working week as always and there is a big weekend coming up as well. There will be the Tropical Outlook tomorrow and on Sunday, instead of it being purely the Global Weather and Climate Report, we're going to talk about the um, update number one of winter 2024-25. I have to confess to you that I have been working pretty hard getting this update done and it's essentially incomplete yet. So I'm not going to be discussing that in today's video, but I will talk about it in detail on the live stream at 4 p.m. this Sunday afternoon. So if you're available and you're around, it would be great to see you. We'll talk about the latest teleconnections, the developing La Nina, where we're at with regards to the global picture and the potential later down the road. So I hope you can join me for that. Um, so there will be the written update and there will also be the discussion uh, on Sunday afternoon. This is the latest lightning activity over the North African continent. Isn't it incredible to see this? Not just at this time of the year when it's typically the driest part of the year, but it's actually remarkable to see it full stop. Even at any time of the year, you do not often see this amount of lightning activity over the Sahara Desert here. And then we've also got clusters over northern Spain, parts of southwestern France, a little bit off Biscay here. We've got an area of low pressure. We'll look at that in just a second. Eastern Turkey, the Balkans as well. We're talking about the, some lightning and thunderstorm activity. Also, now, the El La Nina um, was a bit stalled out during the peak of the summer there. We're starting to see it increase in intensity. And the reason for that is easterly winds uh, have been blowing stronger during the month of August. That's allowing cold deep waters below the surface to rise to the surface. And we're seeing the temperature now below a half a degree below average in terms of the Nina region 3.4. We're also interestingly seeing the SOI going from negative, which is a El Nino base state, to a positive, which is a La Nina base state. And what I think is happening is, and I've discussed this in recent times, about the potential of the slowing down of momentum within the westerly flow throughout the Northern Hemisphere. We're seeing higher pressure building further north here. The Arctic Oscillation, the North Atlantic Oscillation, is expected to go negative after what has been a record strong positive NAO summer, may I add. So... Um, the World Climate Service had uh, put out a tweet there to show that uh, it was the strongest NAO, positive NAO, since uh, since records began. So you can see this here. Interesting. Wow. August NAO index was the most positive on record for any calendar month and by far the most positive for August. Data going back to 1900 via reanalysis. This was very well predicted by the seasonal models being linked, I believe, to the March SSW event. Remember, we've seen the strong negative NAO during the month of uh, May and also into June. We've seen the cold first half of June. That was uh, on the back half of a record warm May, of course. But interestingly enough, the models were suggesting that we go from a, a negative during the month of June to firm positive during the month of August. And then the, uh, September, actually, uh, way back, this is going all the way back to May, of course, but September is actually supposed to be positive. But if we look at the NAO um, coming up, it is expected to go slightly negative, not deeply negative, but slightly nonetheless. And you can see that this is following a firmly positive NAO summer. The Arctic Oscillation 2 is going negative so is this the potential response of the soi going positive the slowing down of westerly momentum then higher pressure and warmer air within the subtropics we've got a lot of warmth not just at the surface but all the way up through the column that's been suppressed in the tropics but this is maybe the reasons behind why the AO and the NAO, which has been like i said it's been negative all the way through to the first half of june a couple of little drops just below the neutral line a couple of times july and uh, also in august but it looks as if it could be going deeper negative as we move 
deeper into the month of September. Now, the Man Julian Oscillation as well has factors involved in that as well, but I do think it's possible that it could be the SOI that's starting to change the, the longer-term pattern. I think during the middle and second half of the summer, El Nino Bay State had quite strong jet stream over the North Atlantic, and the uh, water temperatures within the North Atlantic have cooled quite substantially. These are the latest SSTs, according to the CDAS data here. So this is dated between 1981 and 2010. You can see the, the ribbon of cool. Now we've got warm water within just below that ribbon of cool. And the reason for this, by the way, has been a cool pool troughiness over Greenland, strong region over the central tropical Atlantic here. And we've got this battleground in between stronger winds blowing between these conflicting air masses, then forces cold waters from below the surface up to the surface. And we've cooled the top layer of the of the North Atlantic here. But notice here that we're starting to see warming now starting to drift up into the Baffin Straits here, which is quite interesting to see. There's your La Nina starting to become a little bit more prominent. And the latest off the ECMWF is suggesting that the, um, let's actually go to the article I'm writing up and I'll show you in this here. The uh, So this is the content that I will be delivering to you. So there's that, the, the August upper air pattern, the mean sea level pressure anomaly, as well as the, the 500 millibar geopotential heights. Look at the depth of the trough extending from Baffin Straits through Greenland, Iceland, and down towards the northern UK here. Obviously a cool wet north, and a warmer, drier south for the UK here. Record warmth continued over much of Europe, and uh, that has forced the cooling of the North Atlantic. But this is, a, let me just see here. Let's look at the ECNWF, where it's shown. Right, so this is what it's expecting. This is a new run of the model here, just put out a day or two ago. This is the period between October, November, and December. You can see here a more prominent La Nina starting to show up here. Sinking over the East Pacific, ri uh, rising over the West Pacific. We'll talk more about the uh, Walker circulation and how the atmosphere responds to this warm west, cool east of the equatorial Pacific. But notice here by the time we reach December, January, and February, it's starting to see a more central Madoki style La Nina developing. So this is something that we'll be looking at uh, this upcoming Sunday here, so stay tuned for that. But you can see here the uh, North Atlantic waters uh, seeing the cooling taking place here. Not dramatically so, but nonetheless, from about half a degree below average down towards uh, 0 0.2 below average here. But when, when you look at the tropical Pacific, uh, or Atlantic, should I say, sorry about that, uh, you can see here this is the mid-Atlantic uh, mid latitude central Atlantic, and you can see here that the temperatures remain quite warm. Looking at the MDR of the global tropics, we've seen an increase in the temperature here, and then the Atlantic MDR here as well, staying very warm. But uh, so that's that, and I've talked about the response within the upper atmosphere to this uh, change taking place in the equatorial Pacific. Let's look at the latest CFSV2 weeklies. And look at the Northern Hemisphere in particular. This is quite important to look at. And then we'll get into uh, more stuff here. So this is the upcoming seven days. Blocking over the North Atlantic here. Not a huge amount over Greenland. If you notice here, the focus is generally over the open North Atlantic Ocean here. Extending into the Northern UK. There's the trough underneath that cutoff area of low pressure. Very much indicative of the ideas that I had for early September, cut off low to the south and higher pressure to the north here. In the week two, this is quite interesting. It's actually uh, starting to look a little bit more Atlantic driven as opposed to the, uh, the the classic negative NAO signal here. But we do have colder early season Arctic air dropping into the UK next week here. And uh, it will potentially uh, bring quite a significant difference in terms of the overall temperature. But looking at the U European view here, and you can see this is, yeah, quite a westerly flow, if you notice here, compared to what ori originally was shown. So this is week one, week two. Let's have a look at the, the temperature anomalies actually real quick, just to see what it's shown. Is it as cool as it was? Not as cool, if you notice. We're actually closer to average across more southern UK, 
it cooling average across the north near that area of low pressure. So that's a bit of a, a flip around in the, the, the weeklies here of the CFSV2. Let's go back to the 06Z run of the GFS Ensemble for the upcoming five days, warmer than average, cooler across western France, most of Iberia, into the 6 to 10 day. You can see here, there's that cool signal shown. What's the upper heights looking like? Of this model let's have a look and see so there you go upcoming five days and then as we progress through the next few days there's that trough developing here looking real quick at the up uh, the uh, northern hemisphere view does it have that positive extending up into Greenland that would be interesting to see actually and yet yeah, it is it's more of a classic negative NAO signal if you notice here northerly flow let's have a quick look at the what the charts are looking like so this is the here and now by the way heavy rainfall right along the far far south of the uk uh easterly winds cool along the east coast this is the visible satellite imagery beautiful looking curler showing up that's a, a classic textbook uh cut off area of low pressure spinning over biscay southern fringes of the uk we're seeing uh the heavy rainfall and also remember that we're transporting record heat across Europe, east uh, westwards towards the UK. We've got fret and har, uh, you know, uh, swallowing up the coasts of England and Scotland here. Here at the house, the sun hasn't appeared all day. Temperature stuck at 14 Celsius. Further west, very different story indeed. Uh, warm conditions, to say the least here. Uh, this is the current temperatures at the time of recording, which is the back of 5 p.m., but 20 we actually had 27 at woodville on the lancashire coast a, a few hours ago here uh we've got the 26th and 27th i think we had a 28 at lake and heath but look at this here looks as if scotland's warmest day of the year 27 celsius at oban airport we've got 23 at loch Lusgarnock, but only 14 at tain 14 at dalcross where we've got the har that has been uh, incorporating these areas here these inlet areas temperatures very much subdued here only 16 celsius 14 at Gogar bank in edinburgh while we've got 23 at glasgow airport and bishopton 23.3 we've also got a 26.5 at west through even across the northern ireland it looks as if this is probably the warmest day of the year port de uh, glen own at uh, 24.5 celsius here and um, so yeah very big contrasts over the British Isles as of today. And the 850 temperatures are rather warm also. Let's have a look at the 850s and see what they are showing. So you can see here uh, the 15 Celsius isotherm extend its way through the, the North Midlands into the north of England here. Hence probably why we're seeing some enhanced warming along that day. That northwest coast of England, well, generally below Cumbria, but down around the Lancashire area, especially on the coast, strong winds and uh, and fifteen Celsius at, at five thousand feet, all coming together to create the warming that we're seeing even up across the far north of Scotland. Here you can see the fifteen Celsius isotherm. This is by far the warmest air mass of the year so far, and then cooler air underneath the low. To the south if you notice here plenty of warmth over the mediterranean at the moment but watch what happens as we progress through the next several days here so you can see as we play through the loop that area of low pressure actually then starts to lift northwards bringing the showers and instability further north with it then as we move into next week we've got a northwesterly airflow the high shifts to the west northwesterly winds and look at the 850 temperatures in response to that much much cooler conditions that is going to be quite the slap in the face actually given what we have going at the moment so this is next thursday at the 1800 utc this is currently so that is quite a big contrast for sure looking at uh, a couple of other factors and just trying to see so the nao and the ao is expected to go negative here uh, as we progress through next week Let's see if I've got any interesting tweets to show. Uh, let's see if uh, uh, we've had the highest dew points globally 
for the June through August period on record. We're going to be looking at that as well. We've also got the uh, Super Typhoon Yagi that's moving into Henan Island in just, just the southeast coast of uh, China. Over 30 Celsius waters, favourable MJO, favourable atmosphere overall. We've got um, a beast of a system moving into uh, southeastern China as we speak. So sea surface temperatures are warmer than average. This system is moving in right here. And then if we look at the actual SSTs, 30 Celsius at the surface. And those waters extend quite deep below the surface also. What did they show you this here? Uh, just bear with me a little second here. Um, so I showed you the lightning activity over northern Africa here. This is an ongoing rare event, obviously. This is the upcoming six days of September. Warmer than average across the bulk of England and Wales. Average to slightly below average across the northwest of Scotland, southeastern Ireland. That is going to change over the next day or two, obviously, with the warmth. And then we will see the colder return. But I wanted to show you this here. A... Uh, snow cover snow depth chart here so while it's by no means unusual to see you know early to mid september snow over the highest peaks of the scottish mountains but it's interesting nonetheless that we're talking about 27 celsius today and we are likely to see the potential of a little touch of snow over the tops of the northwest highlands as we progress through the course of next week now the gfs is not seeing it but let's look at the, the ecmwf and i'll show you it because i actually tweeted this out yesterday so let's have a look at the uh, uk view snow depth play it through the loop with that cold northwesterly flow 850s at or just below the zero mark uh is it the latest run there we go so it's indicating a little touch of snow over the tops. Like I said, I'm emphasizing the point. I'm not hyping this up. This is nothing unusual for mid-September by any stretch. But uh, September's a, a contrast month. Uh, it's a transition month. It can be a bumpy road uh, going from summer to winter as it is from winter to summer. And it just goes to show how things can change as we progress uh, over the course of a week to 10 day period here in the UK. Looking at the temperatures of the GFS model here between now and early next week here in particular. And I'll finish with this. Let's look at uh, maximum temperatures here. So we'll go back to the here now. Plenty of warmth to speak about across the UK, especially the further west or south you go. But it's as we progress through the course of next week, you can start to see the cooling down taking place. This is 6 o'clock Tuesday morning, low single figures in places. And daytime maximums, by the way, may struggle in a few places to hit 10 Celsius. Wind chills close to freezing in a few spots. But then nighttime temperatures, if the winds drop off, we could see the temperatures get widely down into low single figures. Look at this here by Thursday morning next week here. 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, extending all the way down into the south of the UK here. Factor in wind chill, it will feel even colder. Let's have a look at the wind chill index. You can see here plenty of chilly numbers. So this is going to be a rude awakening and a reminder that we are now in meteorological autumn's opening month. So certainly big changes coming up between this week and next week. Stay tuned here in Marfogan Weather on youtube here hit that like button share with your friends and family and subscribe as well exciting times to come if you're a lover of, of weather and winter in particular tropical outlook tomorrow and then the live stream that we will talk about the winter coming up in that so i hope you can join me then bye for now